called Creative Tartanites and welcome. I'm very sorry for the very long and lengthy um, silence there uh, because uh, I'm using uh, live now and uh, I didn't realise that I was live. Hello there Angie, hiya. Are you able to hear me okay? Oh hi Gail, hi Gail. Um, if you can hear me okay, um, please uh, give me uh, some indication. Let me uh, just go into my uh, stream. Uh, I've uh, put... Yep, sound good. Fantastic. Hi, Mona. Hello. Right, let me just get on to me now. Yay, there we are. Hello. In fact, um, hang on a tick. Uh, we'll do that first. Hello, hello, hello. Because the other one um, you can see... Uh, had uh, hear you loud and clear fantastic excellent that is so good to know so good to know um right uh oh just realized i haven't actually got paper up on my board but i can get that in just a second um if i'm totally honest guys um i've actually come on with no real plan um, I've had a couple of ideas. Um, I was kind of, oh, will I do a landscape? Will I do an abstract? Will I do another face? Uh, and um, then it kind of occurred to me that actually, this is probably what a lot of people kind of feel. They want to do something, they want to do art, um, but they don't really know where to start. Um, so I thought that actually, that would be a really good topic for a live session and really show you guys um, just, you know, what what we can achieve if we just put our minds to it. Um, what do you guys think about that? Does that sound like a plan that will kind of, um, you know, sorry, my, my hair is, I'm, I'm having a, a, my hair is going to do what it likes day to day. It's, it's this bit here is just, it's got a mind of its own and I've just been totally distracted by it. Uh, so, hello Madonna, hello Chrissy, hello Rachel, Gail, um, I hope I haven't missed anybody. Um, I saw Angie at the beginning. Oh. So, how does that sound? Does that sound good? I'm going to grab a bit of paper. So, this is my, uh, this seems to have become my practice paper. This is Goldline Watercolour Studio Pad, 100 sheets, uh, and it's £90. It's cold press. It's not the most exciting of um, papers, I have to say. Um, but, you know, for practising, it seems quite good. Um, so I have a couple of ideas. Um, now... I don't know whether to go um, with watercolour or whether to go with acrylics. Now, if you decide watercolour, I'm going to have to stretch over and get my watercolour brushes down because I haven't actually got the watercolour brushes out. Um, but I could if that's what you wanted to. And I want to keep this really short um, because um, I'm, I'm not really wanting to, to go too far into tea time. Um, because it's a little bit later than I would normally go. Um, oh, Logan's watching. Oh, bless. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm tr I don't want to go too late. Um, so I don't want to be sort of mucking about too much. Um, right, so question. First question of the day. Um, obviously, when you're kind of in that mood for um, creating, but you're not really sure what to create, it's always a good idea to kind of decide what, medium you want to use so my question to you guys is what do you think i'm kind of thinking acrylics just be pure and simply because i've got the stuff there for acrylics however um i can quite easily grab my um brushes for watercolor if you fancy looking at um just playing with watercolor today uh, so it's entirely up to you you guys tell me what do you think? And I'll give you a moment to think about that. And what I'll do is I'll um, put my hand over my camera and I will set up so that you can see what I'm doing.
Okay, that's me got the camera on thing. I'm going to take away my hand now and see if where it's actually pointing at. Right, just adjust it ever so slightly. Uh, and I will put it onto pick in pick. And watch this, this is this is smart. I, I just figured, this is why I'm late. Um, Cause I just figured this out today. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm not using my DSLR camera today because it was too much of a nuisance keeping switching itself off. The um, face detection was annoying, uh, so I've found an alternative. I am now using uh, my uh, iPad uh, with um, software, uh, with an app to allow me to use it as a webcam. And I've got it sitting on these um, drawers. You can see my hand here. Um, got sitting on the, the cardboard drawers, uh, pointing down. Uh, be back in a minute, need to get something to drink. Oh, yes, go get something to drink, Mona. I hope you're feeling a little bit better again today because I know you've been feeling particularly poorly. So we have our um, palette. That's all set up, ready. Uh, and uh, I've got my acrylics next to me. Uh, so the next... The next sort of um, thing that we need to kind of think about is, okay, so what paints are we going to use? I thought, well, um, let me demonstrate what I usually do. I usually pick up um, all my paints um, that I, you know, if I'm not in the, if I don't know what I'm wanting to use, I'll pick them all up. So I've just grabbed um, a good handful and because this is um, this is a practice uh, I am not actually what's the word I'm <laughs> yeah I'm not going to use my um, ex most expensive uh, paints so uh, okay so Chrissy's saying just thought acrylics because acrylic April uh, not that I'm doing it. Well, interesting you should mention Acrylic April, uh, Chrissy, because I am actually going to be doing it. Um, so, uh, yes, it will be good practice for me to try and get um, get something uh, done. Uh, and um, so, yes, this is, this is going to be good practice. So, fantastic that everybody's agreeing that acrylics are going to be good. So, excellent. Fantastic. Yay. Now, every now and then you will see the um, this one here. You will see this uh, as um, it will come up with the little black thing and the, the the little circle like that. And that's because I am stingy. I won't pay for the app until I know that the app is actually good enough. Uh, so I'm trying out the app and if I do like it, then maybe I will... Um, uh, use it so hence why I've got it on the um, the palette uh, because if it cuts out just for a second it won't matter too much uh, right okay so there are lots of different ways that we can do this um, flowers are usually a good way to go um, maybe even a landscape or a seascape might be a good way to go. Um, so I thought just for a change, rather than do a face, um, good idea, Tania, I'm stingy. <laughs> so I thought um, rather than do uh, a face, because um, I mean, I love faces. I love painting portraits. But, do you know, I think sometimes taking that step away from something that you're doing on a regular basis and trying something different then helps you to kind of move on a little bit with um you know going back to the portrait so i find that when i do something else other than a portrait that i've been doing um i find that my portraits will improve um so that's something to to, to bear in mind um so the next oops dropping my paints the next question then is really whether i put my paper in this direction or this direction 
I'm probably going to pop it in like this uh, and the reason why I'm probably going to do it in this direction is simply because if I do it this way I'm more likely to put a portrait in and I'm really not wanting to to necessarily do a portrait um, so Mona's saying that it's raining there and uh, she'd prefer that to the snow <laughs> Well, it's it's actually been relatively dry. It's it's kind of raining a little bit at the moment, but otherwise it's been quite dry. Um, oh, excuse me. I'm kind of thinking that I'd quite like to do a little bit of abstract, but I, I'm thinking abstract, maybe um, landscape. Mm, don't know, um, but we'll see. We will see. Um, so I'm actually thinking maybe um, I'm thinking maybe palette knives uh, to get the paint on a little bit quicker. So let's let's just let's just dive in, shall we? Let's um, let's just get starting to paint. So I've been talking about landscapes, so let's let's just go with that. Let's just um, think about our colour scheme from a landscape point of view. So I'm thinking kind of my blues up here, um, graduating it down into my um, greens or whatever colour that kind of happens to. So I've just put out some... Uh, cerulean um, blue. Uh, I'm going to pop out some ultramarine blue now. Um, and because I'm not really wanting to have it opaque, I'm going to put out some mixing white and see how, how I go with that. Again, it's nothing to do with anything. Ouch! Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't get that open and I've just, I've just hurt my finger because it just suddenly snapped open. Uh, I'm going to put out some mixing white and just experiment a little bit. So here we have um, just a couple of colours out just now. Uh, let me grab, if I can find my big one, oh here it's here. Right, I've got um, this one here. I'm going to try this one. Uh, and I'm going to just pop the paint on. Simple as that. And then I'm going to grab some of this mixing white and see what happens with that. Now that's kind of cool. Just bear in mind that I'm just starting this painting off, not really paying too much attention to what I'm actually doing. Other than just simply getting some colour. Onto the paper. Now obviously that clip is in the way. I'm just too lazy to what's the word I was looking? yeah I'm too lazy to tape it that's essentially I just wanted to clip it on. Uh, so Mona's saying that she's needing to uh, get her, prepare all our papers for uh, a April acrylic challenge. Nice blue colour. Thank you. I quite like it. I quite like it. I'm now going to kind of switch things up a little bit and I'm going to um, I'm going to pop on some of this uh, golden uh, open titanium white. Um, just because I, I just want I've not really used it much so I'm wanting to to just see what will happen if I do. I 
Okay, that's interesting. So we've got some reasonable texture in there. Um, right, it's getting a bit boring with those colours, I think. Uh, I might add in just a little bit of the ultramarine blue and just see what kind of happens with the colour. Certainly um, gives a an interesting colour, that's for sure. I'm just seeing if I can get a reasonably straight line. doesn't have to be exactly straight because again as I said I'm literally just messing about. I think I will swap over to some turquoise see what I can do with the turquoise So that's quite a sort of in your face colour, um, but that's okay. Like I said, I'm just, just seeing what I can do with it at this moment in time. Not really thinking too uh, much. Just messing about, just playing. Uh, yes, Angie, it is. It's just practice. It's just just spreading it around um, because I haven't really got any particular, you know, any particular ideas in mind um, for what I'm wanting to do. So rather than not do anything, I thought it might be nice to. To just paint for the sake of painting. So that's that. Um, I'm going to I'm going to sort of really experiment now, and I'm going to think right. Okay, um, the colours are a bit too in your face. So what happens? Obviously the paper's going to curl now, um, but what happens if I decide to add a little bit of brown into the mix? Not an awful lot. So I was thinking that maybe, just maybe, now obviously with this particular palette I'm really scraping on and can probably scraping an awful lot of it off. Um, the, the paper that I'm working on, it's not really very good for doing in pastel particularly um, right at the very start because it literally does just buckle the paper because of the wetness um, so I'm kind of just scraping it on really really lightly and what that does is it actually puts on a very thin 
coat of acrylic so when it actually dries so you've got really quite a you know a, a, a reasonable start to a bit of an abstract painting yes yes Mona um, you're right it does um, take just that little bit it's a slow drying acrylic um, and I, I've got, um, obviously, I've got ordinary titanium white um, with the golden uh, and I just um, wanted to, to just use it and see just how quickly it dries or how, how slowly it dries, depending on what way you want to look at it. Um, Uh, see now my head's thinking that's never <laughs> do you know <laughs> I think we need some of this don't you Chrissy? do you think that maybe we need a little bit of green gold in our lives today I'm going to I'm going to do a Chrissy okay why is that not there we go. Come on, come back. Palette. Right, um, wanna try something? Okay. There we go, that should, there we are. I've just rebooted it. Right, I'm going to pop out some green gold and see how we go with that. Right. Ooh, nice. Nice. So yeah, as I was saying earlier on, when you do it this thin, um, you 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 kind of do a, a bit of a a very thin. It, it becomes very thin plastic, and so that then allows you to put more layers on top. Um, without necessarily um, getting the same buckling um, because you can see now that I'm now that it's kind of starting to dry it's not quite as bent as it was um, Mona says I've not tried the green gold yet um, not been painting for a while well to be fair Mona you haven't really been feeling particularly well have you um, which is not um, which has not been so good right uh, I think um, now I'm actually going to go back to my brush because I'm going to I'm going to work on the sky a little bit um, now that I've got the paper covered. And I'm going to to just kind of pop in just randomly because I'm thinking okay skies may be a bit too blue and that's interesting that now that I've gone back into the sky um, there's actually not that much that has actually dried so I'm just going to, to just pop some different 
kind of shades of of color and just make the sky just a little bit more interesting yes Mona you did do the face last week you did a fantastic job of the face last week I just uh, kind of grabbed a little bit of of green and added other parts. Um, so a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, and I'm just just working my way kind of through the painting, and just. Adding a bit here and there. And seeing what comes out. There was a little bit of the when you do things like this what you're also doing is you mix colors that you may not necessarily have mixed before and see what happens just see what happens now i'm going to put out a little bit of burnt umber because i want to if i can get the blooming lid off there we go because I want to get a grey and I can't really get a grey with the colours that I've got. So this is my um, oops, student paint burnt umber. So I could probably do with getting it uh, <laughs> getting it used up if I'm honest. Um, Because I'm kind of really thinking actually some mountains. I think that one's going to come forward. in the distance like I said this is just really messing about just thinking about what I know um, might actually do a bit of a, a greyed out green You know just messing about this is the perfect opportunity when you don't know what to do to mess about add colors that you wouldn't normally add mix them together see what happens you know think oh I wonder what that would do there so there I've put a little bit of the the green gold on that And just to see what happens and there's the answer that's what happens just adding a bit of brown there again you know what happens well that's what happens
So there you go. You know, it's just because you haven't really decided what to do um, doesn't mean to say you can't paint. Just get your paints out, do it. Just experiment, just mess about. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you come up with a really rubbish um, painting, but you've actually discovered that a certain paint that mixes with another paint actually makes a fantastic colour and you love it, then you keep that information for the next time. Hello, Denise. Hello there. Oh. Oh, Denise. Well, I shall keep my fingers crossed for you and um, I shall be thinking about you and I hope that... Um, that everything works out. And I'm sorry, see that's the difficulty with using the iPad. Let me see if I can um, silence that. Um, oh, sorry, that was my finger over the... Now, where's the... There we go. Right, that's it muted. Um, so hopefully, oh, there we go. Hopefully that um, will mean that I won't hear. Uh, <laughs> Mona says that was not me. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yes, think positive thoughts. I've been through that. It's so scary. Um, yes, it is very scary. It is very scary. Uh, right, okay, so when you're doing these kinds of experimental, oh, that's not, where did that come from? I don't think that was my big iPad, or maybe it was. Oh, I've got it on silent, why is it not? Oh, right, sorry, we'll just have to put up with it, unfortunately. Um... Right, and I've totally forgotten what I was just about to say there. There we go. And this is a good time to kind of think about, you know, sort of playing with perspectives and, um, you know, what goes where and, and why and and all that kind of sort of malarkey. Um, and if you want to pop in different colours, then pop in different colours. I mean, one of the things to think about when you're doing um, when you're doing a right, let's just paint and not think about it, is is to really think. Well, okay, um, what do I know, or what am I not good at? Um, because if if you think about, like, if you wanted to put some trees in, you might be then thinking, well, okay, so I want to put some trees in, but where do you start them? What do you actually do? Now would be a good time to actually think about that. Um, I don't have a, a reference photo in front of me. Um, I don't have anything uh, at all. I'm just playing this by ear. Uh, in fact, um, that's the other thing as well. Uh, I'm going to look at putting in a little bit of red because um, hang on ah. there we go a little bit of red because purple get that off my finger purple um, can actually make a really good shadow colour
Now that's more of a a brown, but uh, I'm sure we can. There we go. Bit more. Um, bit more purple there, see? So really good to to use the time when you're thinking, I really don't know what I want to do. And to mess about, to really think about what it is that you're actually got and how that the Can work for you. So I'm thinking, right, um, maybe I'd quite like to, to put in some trees. So where are my trees going to go? How close are they? Are, you know, do we have one right in the foreground here? That is then going to get to the point where it's actually stopping you from seeing that mountain. I'm not very good at trees, by the way, particularly when I don't have something in front of me. But this is just an abstract. This isn't... Um, Is it an evergreen? Is it a big bushy one? What, you know? What is actually there in front of you? I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you're really wanting to, to, to play about with, um, you know, getting your perspectives right and uh, what not there's nothing to stop you from using a photograph and really looking at it but sometimes you don't have the luxury of um, having a photograph in front of you um, in which case you know just just play about with it and see what you can come up with So you see, you can really just think about what you know. With mountain, I've, I've, I'm probably repeating myself now. With mountains, you know that there is like, you know, there's the dark part, there's the light part. Um, sometimes there is, you know, a little bit um, more sort of greenery uh, down the bottom end of it. there's going to be different, uh, it can be quite jagged, so you're going to have darker and lighter areas. Um, so 
So it could be that the sun is kind of, there's a, a bit of a ridge here and the sun is hitting it there. Um, but yet it's really actually very dark. So you've got different areas in a mountain that's catching the light as well. So maybe this mountain here is catching the light here. Maybe this side of the mountain is not quite as white as that because the light's not catching it. Maybe the light's coming from this side. And so it's only really this part of the mountains that are actually getting getting the light. You know, it's it's good to just practice and just, you know, think about what you can actually do. And if you get to the point where you're like, eh, do you know what, I actually don't know what else I want to do, um, then maybe maybe that's the time that you need to to just call it quits and start another one and start from scratch and do the same thing over again. You know, um, maybe you might decide that actually, um, I'm going to have a, a house or, you know, maybe the house is so much in the distance that you're not really seeing the detail. Maybe that house is just a bit too I've got that house just a bit too dark. I do light. Maybe it's maybe it's a bit too kind of detailed. I don't know, but I'm just messing about. I'm looking to see what works and what's not working. Maybe that up the back there. It's not dark enough. So add in a bit more dark to see. Maybe I don't like that at all. Maybe I'm just going to take it out. Maybe I'll switch to Maybe I'll switch to a smaller brush. Maybe that's not working either. Or maybe I've just come to the point where I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, maybe this just isn't working anymore. And maybe I take the whole thing out. It's, it really is just 
Um, oh, hello, Helen. How are you today? Uh, Mona says, there goes the house. <laughs> A demolished wee house. Oh, hello, Laura. Hello, how are you doing today? So, yeah. Um, somebody mentioned... Um, Somebody mentioned water. Well, maybe there is some water in the distance. Maybe. Maybe there's a bit of a lake. And maybe, if I can... Maybe that's the shoreline. But we're not really seeing it particularly well, so maybe it's kind of blending in because it's in the background. And maybe we've got the mountains kind of Um, shadowing in the water. That's probably a bit too... too light. So let's get that darker again. So there we go. So you, do you see how you can really just practice um, doing different things and seeing what will actually happen? It's really... It's really nothing particularly... Okay, this is... Uh irritating because I don't understand why it's there we go why it's staying off for so long maybe it's because it is free um, thank you Mona I mean, this is not something that I would necessarily, um, you know, say that that is an amazing painting and that, um, you know, I'm going to uh, do anything particularly with it. However, um, you know, having said that, there's there's bits in this painting that I'm really liking you know um the the mountains are reasonably looking reasonably okay I'm really liking uh the reflection that I've got going on here um the tree kind of looks like a tree you know that there are things that I'm really liking in it and so these are the things that I will take with me into the next painting because I think one of the things that I've learned from this painting is that as much as I would like to have put in 
um, a house, I really need to think about the perspective because this is a big tree that's sitting here um, in the front. So it's how do I get that house to look like it should be there without it actually being... Um, you know, too big or too small. And that's something I could potentially play with um, to be able to get, get it right. Is there anything in the background? Um, is going to be greyed out but it's not really standing out against the, the um the mountains so let's Let's make that attempt again. Is it allowing me to... to actually get this right? I would argue no, but hey-ho. There, that's starting to look a little bit better. Um... There we go. So it's, you know, it's a little bit more in the distance. It's not... It's not necessarily absolutely correct, but yeah. It's a little bit better than it was. So we've got something. You can't see it, I don't think. Can you? Possibly not. Um, let me bring it up. Oh, there you go. See, there's my house. So, how is everybody doing? What's what's new with you guys? Put some land in the foreground and then add some heather in here. I don't know. See, I'm not really, I'm not a landscape artist. I don't, I don't paint landscapes, so I have no idea what I'm doing. But that's one of the reasons why I picked this. Um, because I just wanted to show you that it's just... It's okay, so Chrissy's saying the purple looks nice with the blue and green gold. Yes, it does seem to, doesn't it? Now, I'm just going to make a little bit more of this, this lake. I've decided it's going to be a lake and I've decided that there's going to be it's a bit more down this direction
Because when you do something like this, what you're doing is you're learning what you do know and what you don't know. I'm not a big lover of working without a reference. I so much prefer to work with a reference. But what I'm liking about working like this today is actually getting to know what I do know and what I don't know. And I think it's quite apparent that I kind of, I've got a really reasonable grasp on how to get um, the light and the darker um, for objects um, such as the mountains um, and how to get the different sides to them. And that's probably comes from being able to know where the shadows and the lights are on a face. Um, but what I'm not very good at uh, is uh, really think, you know, knowing what the perspective of that house is going to be necessarily next to um, this tree that's right in the foreground. Um, and where would I put um, other trees? Um, and how would I put other trees? So I'm just going to experiment a little bit and see what will actually happen if I try. Well that's clearly not very good because you can't even see it. <laughs> so that'll be that and I'm going to take that out because I don't like it. So, yeah, um, I think I think this is really helpful in informing me what I do and don't know. Um, let me go back to the bigger brush again. So. Let me think about what's actually here in the foreground. And I'm really just working in really thin layers here. Um, I'm, t I'm actually, I'm struggling to know where to go next with this uh, painting. My skills at um, landscape art without something in front of me are pretty pants. Um, but what I think I might do is I might think, well, okay, um, let's, yeah, I've got kind of the sky in a little bit, but maybe, um, maybe I might be thinking, well, actually, how about how about adding a little bit of interest in the clouds? And let's just see what actually happens if I add in a little bit of colour. Just 
out of curiosity. Just see what happens. Because sometimes we get some fantastic colours in our clouds. And I think that can be really interesting. just messing about so there you know Denise says I like using a fan brush for distant trees especially for pine trees Yeah, and I have a fan brush as well. I never thought to get that out. Never thought to get that out. And I think the other thing that this proves is that sometimes uh, people can be absolutely amazing at one particular type of art and then not necessarily particularly good at anything else um, because it takes practice and you know, I, my portraits, um, they are very, they're practiced, that's the thing. Um, so Mona says, yes, it is not easy to just come up with something. Uh, she can't uh, do it. She needs a reference photo uh, or else everything will look flat. Um, yes, um, you are making sense. It's about knowing where the shadows and the lights are. And I think that's um, that's the trick, essentially. Um, and so I think... <laughs> oh, bless. Um, I've just, I've realised that I haven't really been paying much attention to the uh, comments today. So... Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this here um, and I am going to switch back to uh, my face uh, and uh, we can have a little bit of a discussion. Um, about uh, what we've uh, just been observing uh, and uh, see if there's anything that uh, anybody has in terms of questions or anything like that. Uh, let me just pop the camera back up. Okay, so Right, there we go. Um, where's my mouse gone? Here we are. Let's get rid of the... There we go. Let me pop this up just a little bit more. There we go. So, that is that. Now, I think that goes to show, it goes to prove that you know, sometimes just messing about with paints is a really good way to discover what it is that you don't know so you can think about, well, actually, do you know what? I really wanted to do such and such a thing. I wasn't able to do it, so I'm now going to go and find a reference uh, and I am going to try again. Now, the one thing that I've got reasonably well is my, um, my mountains and I think uh, that the clouds uh, were starting to, to kind of build up. So these are the things that I know that I'm reasonably okay at. Uh, and, um, you know, working on uh, being able to uh, do some 
trees and things. Now bear in mind that I'm not a, port uh, I'm not a, a landscape artist, I'm a portrait artist. So the things that I do, um, th the things I do very well are portraits. But I wanted to show you that I am okay. Whoops, that was uh, a bit of a bang maybe. I wanted to show you that I'm okay with not being good at absolutely everything. Um, I wanted to show you that, you know, sometimes we need to have a play and produce something like this to then be inspired to know what to do next. Um, so, oh, excuse me. Um, and, and so, you know, for me, um, watching people like Chrissy Art, for example, um, there's loads of things that I pick up uh, from watching Chrissy uh, because uh, she uh, does do uh, much more um, of the other stuff that I'm not so good at. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think as well, there's a perception that only good artists actually um, produce art without reference. And that's actually not true. <laughs> that's so not true. Um, an artist is an artist. Um, there's no such thing as a true artist or, uh, you know, um, you can't call yourself an artist if you're X, Y, and Z. Um, essentially it's it's really you're an artist if you're an artist and it's as simple as that um there is such a, a wide range of what people like um what they dislike uh, that you know there are some people who are artists that i don't like but just because i don't like them doesn't make them not artists and so i hope that today I've shown that it's actually okay to experiment and to to just try something just for the sake of trying it. I could have gone through and got some uh, reference photos but actually I really I really wanted to just experiment and just discover what it was that I didn't know. Because you don't know what you don't know. And by doing this kind of painting, it really highlights what you don't know. And I think that today's painting has highlighted what I don't know. And so now I can be inspired to then look it up. Um, so does that make sense, people? Has anybody got any questions? Anybody got anything that they want to add? Um, anybody have any sort of thoughts on what I've just been saying? Um, so Denise is saying, I understand, Tanya. Like you say, um, when you keep trying and practice, you get there. I love doing portraits, landscapes and animals. Um, Gail is saying, in uh, my opinion, those who can paint without reference photo in front of them have very good memories. And that's exactly what it is. If you paint without a photo in front of you um, or a reference of any kind in front of you, it's because you have painted an object or a subject so many times that it is in there. For those whom you might consider perhaps prodigies, I would kind of suggest that, um, you know, there are people out there who have photographic memories. Um, and so, you know, that, that's not everybody. And just because you may have a photographic memory and be able to paint um, as, as well as, as some of them do, that doesn't necessarily mean to say that they are any better an artist than someone who has had to practice and put in the work and actually learn how to be an artist. Um, it, it makes no difference. Um, I find this a really fascinating topic actually, um, the whole concept of 
um, I, I, somebody started a conversation yesterday in a chat um, with uh, a, a question of what's the difference between gifted and talented um, and it's that whole kind of um, well does it really matter does it actually matter whether um, somebody is gifted or talented or you know whether or not they um, have to work hard to produce what they produce does it does that change the value of the um, end product um, Michael Ann if my ex had a oh sorry Michael Ann says that she, her ex had a photographic memory it drove me nuts <laughs> hello Michael Ann how are you today um, so yeah and uh, Chrissy's saying that she read that and it was very interesting and that's yeah that's exactly where I um where we were talking about it Chrissy was in your life and and whilst I can appreciate that everybody has a different opinion and that's that's also okay um uh, obviously this is uh this is my channel and I'm obviously going to say my opinion but equally I'm quite happy for people to um, you know, counter with what their opinion is because everybody's opinion has value uh, and, um, you know, it's that back to, I think I've mentioned this kind of, sort of, in a roundabout way before, but does does the fact that this isn't as good does that make it any less of a value um, than this painting here that um, I really, really like um I'm not liking this particularly much, I have to say. Um, but that doesn't make it bad. I'm just not comfortable with it at this moment in time. Uh, but I'm sure there are people out there uh, that would be saying, oh no, no, that's actually a really very good painting. I like this, I like that, I like what you did with X, Y and Z, you know. Um, but it, I'm not saying the painting's rubbish. By, by no means I'm not saying the painting's rubbish and I'm certainly not saying it has no value because it does have value because I did it um, and as I said you know I do have um, landscape paintings that I have done and I've done them with a reference and that painting is would I would argue um, I like better than that painting um, so Denise is saying so true Mona said, if everyone would have the same opinions about everything it would be a boring that's absolutely true um, how can you compare the paintings there of different objects all together um, well in terms of um, in terms of skills and techniques for painting um, that's um, how you can um, but you're right you know um, it's it's like comparing chalk and cheese isn't it um, and Chrissy is saying I could work on that Tanya it's a good base thank you Chrissy um, and yes it it probably is a good base um, it's a reasonably good um, uh, composition uh, I'm I actually do like the mountains and I like the way the clouds were starting to go and I could build on that um, so, you know, there's lots of things that I can do, but I guess um, for today's live, it was more about um, proving that everything has value, even when you try to do something that doesn't turn out to be a perfect masterpiece. Okay, I'll change the, I'll change the wording of that because there's no such thing as the perfect masterpiece, but it's about, um, I guess it's about you know really my strengths are being able to oh hello Dina hello how are you thank you for joining me um I, I to be honest Chrissy I probably won't and the reason I probably won't is because I want to leave it as it is as a as a reminder um I may start another painting and get it to that point and then work further but that painting I'm actually probably just going to leave it as is 
um oh hi there jonesy hello hello what what uh, area in canada are you i mean obviously not specific area but um uh but i've got uh, a couple of uh, people that i know who live in canada and i have actually visited canada i have been in um uh sort of the edmonton area uh, in canada so that was fun um so yeah uh, it's um i just thought it might be interesting uh, for us to kind of have this this discussion oh thank you dina thank you very much appreciated um madonna is saying i think we all excel at what we enjoy painting and have practiced when we get out of our comfort zone like you showed us it can change the outlook um oh denise you're in canada too you're quebec i'm not so familiar with that area um i've um i've heard of it i'm just not so familiar with it uh so yeah no you're, you're absolutely right madonna it does change our outlook um and um i i'm actually my skills lie in being able to paint what i see so if I'm painting a landscape and I paint it, as I was saying earlier on, if I paint a landscape and I paint it from one of my photographs, uh, then I can paint that landscape because my skills um, are very good. They can still do with improvement. I'm not saying I'm brilliant or fantastic and uh, you know that I don't need to learn anything more because I always want to learn more. Um, I always want to evolve uh, as an artist. Um, but I, my skills do lie in being able to paint what I see. So um, if I have reference, then I'm much more likely to produce um, a, what I would consider to be a much more comfortable piece of art with that. So for me, being able to do something without looking at the reference, that is intensely um, valuable to me because it really really gives me information about what I don't know so I can then work on that um, and when you know something inside out you can then play a little more with the painting to develop a style to develop um, uh, you know what is what becomes your signature what becomes um and oh thank you oh wow thank you thank you so much denise um i really appreciate you saying that and you know i um i i'm just i'm always like so excited and um humbled by the fact that so many of you um actually come to my lives and you hang out for so long and you chat with me and and you bring so much value to um the community that i i cannot thank you enough um for uh that uh, value because without you guys i wouldn't have community i wouldn't have somebody to talk to i'd be talking to a camera on my own and you know feeling like i'm talking to myself but the fact that you guys are here and you are joining in this conversation and the fact that you guys that are in the Tartanite tribe, you join in the challenges and you you bring so much value. Um, and Jonesy is saying uh, that uh, he, she, I'm not sure um, uh, which, <laughs> which to say, sorry Jonesy, um, but Jonesy is saying that uh, they have a hard time uh, uh, calling uh, themselves an artist um, and uh, I think a lot of um, oops sorry I think a lot of people do find that um, that you know they struggle to call themselves an artist because there is this preconceived idea perhaps that um, there is you know this this criteria that you need to meet in order to be an artist you know um the, there's that uh, falsehood of in order to be an artist uh, you need to be able to work without a reference 
Hmm. Well, no, because um, that's not true. Um, you know, that's why you have artist models. Artist models are still a reference. You're still looking at it. Still life. People that, um, you know, when you, when you set up a still life, do you look at the still life and go, right, okay, that's that's um, that's what I know I need to be painting, right? Let's cover up the, the still life and let's just go ahead and paint it. That's rubbish. You don't do that. Nobody does that. Um, you don't sit down at a canvas and think, hmm, uh, I'm going to paint a still life and just go in and paint. Well, I, I would imagine that there's, there's probably somebody out in the world that can do it. But nine times out of ten, I don't think people do. I don't think artists do. Um, uh, and uh, yes, plein air as well. Um, oh, sorry. Um, that would be more noise onto the, the microphone. Um, painting outside, as Chrissy has mentioned. Uh, yes, that's also um, a reference too, because you're still looking at something visually. Dina saying, um, you're a very deep thinker and have a sensitive and pure intention that shows. Oh, thank you. I do try my best. And I think um, I think that's that's the one thing that's that's missing um, from. It's not completely missing from YouTube. I, that's not true because Dina, you're the same. So um, is um, Chrissy mentions it as well. Uh, so does uh, the art Sherpa. There's lots of artists that do um, mention it, but there are a whole load of other artists that don't. There's also a lot of people that come into chat and come into comments that 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 really um, try and bombard um, people with, oh, that's not right because you've done X, Y and Z and that's not right because you've done this and you shouldn't be saying that, that's not right blah 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 um and uh so you know it's it's not um i'm sorry i, I just got distracted with denise's uh, comment uh so uh she's saying that that's what our granddaughter zoe um thought she's 12 and she is so good uh, i told her the same thing about using references good yes um the, the the truth of the matter is is that um you know, anybody using reference, when they do it often enough, they can get to a point where they no longer have to rely as heavily on the reference. But there's nothing wrong with using reference. There really isn't. Um, so I'm just, Mona's saying, uh, so you're an artist then, Jonesy. I feel that those that paint often regularly are artists. For me, it usually takes weeks or even months in between my paintings. Um, I hate to nitpick, Mona. Um, please forgive me for doing this. But if you think about it in this way, you've just set a criteria for what an artist is. So someone who paints often and regular are artists. What about the artists that don't paint as regularly as they could do or they'd like to? Does that not make them artists? And I'm sorry for nitpicking Mona, I, I love you dearly, you know that, I, I do love you dearly, um, but the only reason I'm pointing this out is for anybody who is reading the um, comments and um, Oh no, I, I know that Mona, please, um, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to pick on you. Um, I know that's how you feel um, about you. Um, I guess I'm just kind of unravelling a few things here. Um, and yes, Gail, Mona is an artist, absolutely right. Um, because you're, by saying what you're saying, um, you're kind of feeling that you're not an artist because you're not practice, you know you're not painting often enough um and and you actually are an artist right i'm going to put it in in these terms okay um i don't know if there are um <laughs> jonesy i love this woman tanya you're think you're thinking and yes i suspect mona is an artist because she wants to learn and do it um 
uh, and Gail says says I am an amateur artist. Um, whether you're an amateur artist, a beginner artist, an advanced artist, an intermediate artist, you're still an artist. Um, what is it about using the added um, describing word at the beginning of artist? It's it's a fa I, again. I'm not picking on you, Gail. I promise. Honestly, I'm not. But isn't it fascinating how we 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 kind of we want to label our, label ourselves and rather than um you know call ourselves an artist we'll say we're amateur or beginner because then that way um we don't need to um <laughs> yeah gail's saying I'm definitely not a master and i'm not professional uh so i feel that's an appropriate title no it, it's fine gail i'm not saying that you shouldn't call yourself an amateur uh, artist honestly i promise i'm not saying that at all um I, I i'm just really pointing out that it's interesting um uh how we 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 kind of um it's all down to our perceptions i think sometimes in uh, in what uh, you know in what we actually um, we perceives our we perceive ourselves to be um, because right I'm going to give you a scenario I don't know how many people in the chat are smokers or how many people are ex smokers or how many people are non smokers but let me put it. Um, let me put a scenario to you. You have um, um, so you have someone who is a smoker. I'm going to ask you a question. You have someone as a smoker. They have given up their cigarettes. They no longer smoke. Are they an ex-smoker or are they a non-smoker? That's your question. Somebody who has given up cigarettes, are they a, an ex-smoker or are they a non-smoker? Oh, thank you, Jonesy. So Jonesy's saying ex-smoker, okay. So is there anybody else? Anybody else willing to to put themselves out there and, and answer whether or not an, a smoker who has stopped smoking is an ex-smoker or a non-smoker. So we've got a couple of ex-smokers. Um, we've got Gail who says it doesn't matter in my in my opinion. Um, uh, Michael Ann says uh, ex-smoker and Chrissy says non-smoker. Dina says non-smoker. So we've, we've got a bit of a balance. Um, uh, so And Gail says it depends on the context in which you are discussing the subject. Um, okay, that's, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, uh, so Dina says non-smoker is present tense. It is more powerful. Helen suggests ex-smoker. Oh no, um, Helen is saying, saying she's an ex-smoker now vapes. Um, uh, so Laura says non-smoker, Madonna says ex-smoker. So it, it looks as if we've got a bit of a balance as to, 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 to what people um, perceive. My answer to that is really, um, it's down to what the person perceives themselves to be. Um, I'm going to uh, reveal something now uh, that um, as a teenager, I tried smoking. Didn't like it didn't want to um, be a smoker, but I tried it. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm a non-smoker because I do not smoke. But other people may argue that I'm an ex-smoker, even though I have not smoked since I was a teenager. It's down to the person's perception. So, that's fantastic Mona and so you should be proud of of not actually um smoking so 
if you think on it in that way, okay, both answers are correct to my question about whether they're an, a smoker or an ex, a non-smoker or an ex-smoker, because it's down to the person themselves. Every single person who has stopped smoking has the right to call themselves a non-smoker because they no longer smoke. So regardless of whether you've smoked for one day, one year, 25 years, as Michael Ann is saying, if you no longer smoke, you have the right to say you are a non-smoker. And Dina has just pointed, the, you're too quick for me, Dina. Dina has just said, so a person cannot be an ex-artist, only a non-practicing artist. So when do we call ourselves an artist? Is it once we've painted so many pictures? Is it once we've sold our paintings? Is it once we've hit tick, tick, tick of the criteria that we've put to ourselves? what society says is an artist? Or do we consider ourselves an artist so therefore we have the right to be an artist? Yes, and Chrissy's saying, but we are all still artists, just saying, exactly. So Mona, in order for you to become an artist, I would argue that it's not about more practice or doing more paintings on a more regular basis. I would suggest that being an artist or considering yourself to be an artist is about working on your perception about yourself. Does that make sense? And there's no need to hide behind Chrissy. <laughs> I still love you and I get where you're coming from and to be honest you are the kind of person that I'm appealing to right at this moment in time um you're the the, the kind of person that I'm thinking well do you know what these are the kinds of things that I would like to put out into the universe and hope it sticks on people so people can actually start to consider themselves an artist. Um, now, yes, there are scenarios that, you know, um, maybe you won't feel comfortable about approaching galleries and trying to get your work into a gallery because, you know, um, you may not consider yourself, your work to be necessarily a fit, um, you know, that it doesn't fit into that particular gallery and that's fine because you're not saying you're not an artist by thinking these things or acknowledging these things because at the end of the day, again, galleries are very, very um, individual. Uh, so there are galleries that prefer to have more contemporary work. There are galleries, um, uh, so random question, anybody know what's uh, good creatively for eight-year-olds? Um, Well, I guess that really depends on um, what kind of creativity that you're looking for because eight-year-olds can learn how to crochet, they can learn how to knit, they can learn to paint. Um, you know, uh, there's all sorts of things. Drawing, drawing's quite good. Um, colouring, uh, colouring. Oh, hello there, Mark. Hiya. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing today? We've got one of the... Um, Art Sherpa design team members in the house. Woo! <laughs> Hi, Mark. Um, so, yeah, um, lots of different things. Uh, lots of different things that can, can be um, done uh, with an eight-year-old. Uh, so, I think, I think that pretty much kind of covers it. Has anybody got... Um, did you see what I said, Tanya? No, I didn't actually. Um, let me let me scroll back. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What did you see? Um, okay. 
Right, so Chrissy's saying, all my life I've been insecure about things. Never felt good enough. It's hard to learn old dogs to sit. But saying that, I'm struggling on. You are, you're more than struggling on, Mona. You're striding on. Um, how many people um, who feel really insecure about things can actually um, record a song and put it out there for the public to see, which is exactly what you do on a regular basis. You share it on Facebook. Um, you know, anybody who is on the um, the program that you use can see your video. Um, you have a YouTube channel and you put your work out there. So whilst you still have some stumbling blocks, I get that, I would argue that you're striding and not struggling on. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Uh, Jonesy say you're a recording artist. May I have some more info, please? <laughs> Oh, I'll leave that up to, to Mona. That's not my place to to see. Um, which is why I've um why I've kept it to very generic terms. Mona says thanks, Tanya. It makes sense. As far as I'm concerned, Mona, I think you're you're fantastic. And I think everybody's fantastic. Everybody that is um here uh is fantastic and um I really do appreciate it and uh, thank you so much everybody for all the uh, love and support that I get. Um, I, I just cannot thank you all enough. Um, Mona says, I'd crochet myself into a big ball. <laughs> Gail says, yeah, I've always been able to sing, uh, but no way would I record myself um, singing on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I can sing too. I can sing too. When will my love come to me over land and over sea? Will he be the one for me? Oh, deco, deco, dandie. Alamakadoo. Ooradahinda, ooradahinda, alamakadoo. Oorare, oh, deco, deco, dandie. Now I know that that is in the public. So I won't get um, a, a, a community strike for that. Because <laughs> I know that that is um, public. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. That's about the only thing that I know that I can get away with um, singing on um, without getting a, a strike because um, it is in the public domain. It is a very, 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 very old um, chanting song. Um, and one of the other ones that I know, um, I'm pretty sure um, it's in the public domain because it's it's one of those um, kind of, uh, you know, like um, the, the songs that go in rounds, um, like uh, row, row, row your boat, that kind of thing. Um, well, um, yes, it is. It's an old, it's an old Scottish um, sort of kind of chanting song. Um, uh, cause uh, it's um, now Ochmdun. I can't remember the actual name of it, but um, it's um, uh, when I come into Ochmdun on a May morning, I spy Willie Macintosh before the dawning, and it. it it kind of goes on like that. The other one that I know is in um, in Gaelic, uh, and it is um, to do with um, peas pudding hot and peas pudding cold. And um, again, it's um, it's one of those ones that the more you every time every time you start from the beginning of it, you have to sing it faster, and you get faster and faster and faster. And it, it it's kind of brochen loan tana chlown brochen loan su brochen loan tana chlown brochen loan su brochen loan tana chlown brochen loan su she brochen loan she tana chlown she brochen loan su. Um. No, I I don't think I did share it on Twitter, did I? Oh, maybe I did. 
Um, oh yes, maybe I did. Um, the the um, the our uh, duet. Yes, I shared it on Twitter. Yes, yes, I did. I did. So if you want to check it out, um, go to Twitter and look for at Tat and Taz, uh, and uh, you'll be able to 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 see uh, the 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 duet that um, Mona and I did uh, on the the karaoke. Uh, so yes. Um, it is there. Right, anyway, time is marching on. It is now 10 to 6. I haven't had anything to eat yet. Um, so uh, I'm going to um, love yous all and leave yous. Uh, and um, I'm going to go and organise something to eat. So again, thank you, thank you. Um, and um, oh, one last piece of good news before I, before I, before I head off. I, I, I was wanting to say this and I forgot. Um, I want to thank everybody for subscribing to my channel and helping me to get over a thousand subscribers. Woohoo! Um, that's not the news. The news is, is that now that I've got over the thousand subscribers, I can now post in the community. So I can post community posts on YouTube. So watch out for uh, more posts uh, uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, so that uh, is uh, absolutely fantastic. So yes, over on Twitter, at Tart and Taz, I did share um, the uh, link for our duet. Uh, so yes, go and check that out if you're interested. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Don't forget, look after your mental well-being because nobody else can. You take care. Have a fantastic weekend. On oh, watch out for um, my uh, opening of my Happy Meal from my collaboration with Nina Ibina. I'm going to um, upload that and probably make it live tomorrow. So watch out for that video as well. Um, videos on crochet next. <laughs> well, maybe maybe in the um, Creative Tartar Night Tribe, Rachel. We'll see. Um, I might actually do a, a crochet video at some point in there. So take care, everybody. Bye for now. Love you lots. Bye.